So thank you for inviting us here today um, to share Moms Demand Action's Talking Gun Sense in Tennessee. This is our public awareness presentation. Um, my name is Abby Reich, and I am the Rutherford County Moms Demand Action Student Liaison. I moved to Rutherford County six years ago with my family. My husband's job at MTSU is what brought us to the area. My daughter's a senior in high school, and I work part-time in a local elementary school library. I first became involved with Moms Demand Action while we were living in Chicago. I worked in a first grade classroom at the time, and the shock of the children and staff that were murdered in Sandy Hook was my main call. I was very thankful that a Moms Demand Action chapter was started in Rutherford County. Besides our chapter, we currently have one Students Demand Action chapter that my daughter Isabella is in charge of at Central Magnet School. We have interest from other teens and people at MTSU, and we're hoping to add more chapters soon. So by show of hands, how many people have heard of Moms Demand Action? Good, so I hope I can clarify some things about our organization. Um, we are a grassroots movement of Americans fighting for public safety, measures that can protect people from gun violence. We're working to pass stronger gun laws and to close the loopholes that jeopardize the safety of all of our families. We support the Second Amendment and we encourage a culture of responsible gun ownership. Moms Demand Action began with one mother, Shannon Watts, after the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. She created a Facebook page demanding changes to our gun laws. In the six years since Sandy Hook, Moms Demand Action, which is part of Every Town for Gun Safety, has grown into the largest grassroots movement in the United States, with nearly six million supporters of mothers and others. We have chapters in every state, and here in Tennessee we have ten local chapters across the state. These chapters are in Chattanooga, Clarksville, Cookville, Knoxville, Memphis, Nashville, Rutherford County, Sumner County, Tri-Cities, and Williamson County. So today we're going to be talking gun sense. So we need to have the conversation about the realities of gun violence and discuss the common sense solutions and actions that we can take to prevent senseless acts of gun violence in all of our communities. So you might be asking yourself, what is gun sense and do I have it? Gun sense is acknowledging that there are common sense, gun, common sense solutions to gun violence, which claims over 35,000 <coughs> American lives every year and injures many more. If you believe that people with dangerous history shouldn't have access to guns, you have gun sense. If you support finding ways to protect communities from gun violence while protecting the Second Amendment, you have gun sense. If you believe that lawmakers should listen to the voices of the American majority over the extreme gun lobby, you have gun sense. <coughs> so in this presentation, I'm going to share gun violence data on the national and state level, present some common sense solutions to gun violence, help you learn about actions that you can take today to start saving lives from gun violence, and we'll talk about strengthening our community network so we can work together to end gun violence. So we're going to look at the big picture of gun violence in America. Every day, 100 Americans are killed with guns, and hundreds more are shot and injured. Gun homicides in America are 25 times higher than other high-income countries. This is uniquely an American crisis. 36,383 Americans die by gun violence every year. Gun deaths include homicide, suicide, unintentional shooting, and mass shootings. Mass shootings and shootings on school grounds consume our headlines, but it counts for only 0.42% of gun deaths. Dun death by gun suicide accounts for the greatest share, 61.2% of all gun deaths. Gun violence in America disproportionately affects people of color. Black Americans represent the majority of gun homicides. In fact, black Americans are 10 times more likely to die by gun homicide and are 15 times more likely to be shot and injured in assaults involving guns than white males. The effects of gun violence extend far beyond these casualties. Gun violence shapes the lives of millions of Americans who witness it, those who know someone who was shot, or those who live in fear of the next shooting. 58% of American adults or someone they care for has experienced gun violence in their lifetime. Approximately 3 million American children witness gun violence every year. And I also want to point out that this week begins the National Gun Violence Survivors Week. If you'd like to read stories from gun violence survivors, or if you have a story that you would like to share, please visit, it's one long word, momentsthatsurvive.org. 
So gun violence in Tennessee. We're going to look at the state level. A recent report by the Safe Tennessee Project analyzing CDC data from 2007 to 2017 showed that gun violence in Tennessee outpaced the national average. Tennessee ranks high across all forms of firearm incidents, and these are not the statistics that we want to be known for. Firearm mortality includes all forms of fatal gun violence, all violence-related fatal shootings, including homicide, fatal domestic violence shootings, and legal intervention, to firearm suicides, unintentional shootings, and shootings where the intent is undetermined. Firearm suicide includes any completed suicide where a gun was used. Firearm suicides are unique in both their impulsivity and their lethality. Unlike other methods of suicide, firearm suicide takes little planning and is almost always successful. Digging deeper and looking at gun violence in Tennessee, in 2016, Tennessee was 11th in the nation for firearm deaths of all intents, 7th in the nation for firearm suicide, homicides, and 19th for firearm suicide. Tennessee was one of the worst states with women being shot by their partners. According to a recent study conducted by the Violence Policy Center, Tennessee ranked 5th in the country, and 76% of the murders were by gunfire. In 2019, 5 children died from being shot, and 14 children were injured. So I've shared a lot of statistics, but here are the key takeaways. <coughs> gun violence exists in every community and not just big cities. Gun violence is more than mass shootings that, that consume the headlines. Gun violence is impacting our children at higher rates than 10 years ago. The good news is that gun violence is preventable and there are common sense gun solutions. Moms Demand Action will be fighting against permitless carry, which is something you're gonna hear about, especially in this upcoming legislative session. This seeks to dismantle our current permitting system, and we want to protect the permitting system that's already in place in Tennessee. Moms Demand Action encourages common sense solutions such as firearm safe storage and education with our Be Smart program. We launched this Be Smart campaign to promote responsible gun ownership and reduce child gun deaths. The campaign focuses on education and awareness about child gun deaths and responsible gun storage. 4.6 million children live in homes and ride in cars with guns that are both loaded and unlocked. Firearms are the second leading cause of death for American children and teens. Access to firearm links these two statistics. The good news is we know that we can reduce the number of gun deaths and injuries without changing a single law. The Be Smart campaign raises awareness of responsible gun storage, storing the guns locked and unloaded <coughs> and separate from the ammunition in order to save children's lives. Be Smart emphasizes it's the adult's responsibility to keep kids from accessing guns and that every adult can play a role in keeping kids and communities safer. Another thing that you may have heard about in the news is extreme risk laws, otherwise known as red flag laws, or extreme risk protection orders, or ERPOs. When a person in crisis is considering harming themselves or other family members and law enforcement, excuse me, when a person in crisis is considering harming themselves Family members and law enforcement are often the first people to see these warning signs. Extreme risk laws or red flag laws allow family members and law enforcement to quickly intervene in a time of crisis and temporarily disrupt the access to firearms. So what this means is that the firearm can be temporarily taken away, but that is done through the courts and then the person could petition to have their firearm given back. And one thing we point out is that you can give back the firearm, but you can't give back someone's life. 17 states in D.C. have enacted these extreme risk laws. Currently, Tennessee does not have the extreme risk protection laws, and we're going to continue to fight to get this passed. So we need common sense solutions for schools. For the last 20 years, we have lived with the reality of school shootings, Columbine, Sandy Hook, Virginia Tech, and of course many more. We're now working on evidence-based solutions that keep our schools safe actions that approach the problem from all angles that have proven effective in addressing this issue. In 2019, Every Town for Gun Safety and two large teacher organizations in the country, the American Federation of Teachers and the National Education Association, prepared a report called Keeping Our Schools Safe, a plan to stop mass shootings and end gun violence in American schools. Here are, here's some of what the research showed. 20% of gunfire incidents that occur on the grounds of K-12 schools were unintentional, including those resulting in injury or death and incidents in which no one was shot. 
12% of gunfire incidents involved suicide deaths and attempts where the shooter had no intention of harming others. 56% of people discharging guns on school grounds have a connection with the school. When you consider only active shooters, that number is nearly 80%. In up to 80% of the incidents, the shooters obtained their guns from home, or from a relative's home, or from a friend. One important conclusion of keeping schools safe is that arming teachers does not make schools more safe. Arming teachers ignores research that the presence of a gun increases the risk posed to children. As with their parents' guns at home, school children may learn where the teacher's guns are. Access to the firearm doubles the risk of death by homicide and increases the risk of death by suicide. It ignores the American teachers, school safety experts, and law enforcement who oppose arming teachers. Now we're going to talk about city gun violence prevention. Our final common sense solution that we're going to discuss is the city gun violence prevention and intervention initiatives. While gun violence impacts Americans everywhere, gun homicides and assaults are most prevalent in historically underfunded neighborhoods in our cities. Gun violence reflects this country's long-standing systemic and structural in inequities. There are a wide variety of proven solutions to reduce the violence and increasing safety in these communities. Every town supports community-based violence intervention programs, community cleaning and greening, called crime prevention through environmental design, to increase safety and other evidence-based community-led solutions. We can help by asking lawmakers to fund this work. We can help connect such organizations to grant funding. We can partner with these organizations, amplify their work, and form coalitions to end city gun violence. You can learn more about these and other evidence-based solutions at citygrip.org, which was developed by Every Town for Gun Safety, our umbrella organization. City <coughs> Grip is an online clearinghouse of data-informed gun violence reduction strategies. We can help promote and sustain these programs by supporting their funding at the municipal level. So to recap a few things that are discussed, we need be we need to be smart and encourage responsible firearm storage, guns locked, unloaded, and stored with ammunition separate to help prevent gun, child gun deaths. And this is something that in Rutherford County we're working on. Um, we've gotten approval to pass out literature to all of the elementary schools and send home. Extreme risk laws are saving lives from gun suicide and homicide. School safety requires a holistic approach, including a proper safety plan, combined with common sense gun laws to ensure that guns don't fall in the hands of people with dangerous histories. Arming teachers is not a safe school safety plan. City gun violence must recognize the systemic issues at the core of the violence and implement intervention and prevention solutions that are most suitable for each community. With these facts, there are many ways that you can help. You can help by supporting public awareness programs like our Be Smart program. You can support red flag laws so that law enforcement and family members can act on the warning signs of violence, like those repeatedly occurred in Parkland, and temporarily prevent the access to firearms. You can learn to understand how child access prevention laws addresses the most common source of guns used in gun violence. You can help us raise the age to purchase semi-automatic firearms to 21 to prevent minors like the shooter in Parkland from easily getting hands on guns, and urge your lawmakers to pass legislation requiring background checks on all gun sales. This would keep people that are exhibiting warning signs, minors, and people with dangerous histories from evading our gun laws. At the school level, you can ask if your local school has a threat assessment team that inter can intervene with troubled young people and get them the help that they need. Tennessee passed a law allowing local educational industries to establish a threat assessment team to help schools prevent acts of violence and identify students who need the additional attention. Ask if your local school has upgraded physical security to prevent uninvited visitors from entering the building. Ask if your local school has an emergency plan in place so administrators can secure the school when it's needed. Ask your local school administrator how communication between students and faculty is encouraged and nurtured. What can you do right now? With the, just a few minutes of time, you can help to reduce gun violence. You can follow us, Moms Demand Action Tennessee, on Facebook, and you'll be updated on new data, actions, and events. You can share facts that you've heard today with three of your friends. Do you know another group who might like to hear the presentation? Let us know. We'd be happy to share with other organizations. With your smartphone, you can text the word READY 
to 64433 and you'll be connected to Moms Demand Action. And then of course in one of the most important things is you can vote. Make sure your friends and family are registered to vote. I believe the last day to register is tomorrow. tomorrow. Tuesday. Tuesday. So if you're really ready to dive in, become a Monster Man Action volunteer or presenter. And if you love to write, you can write a letter to the editor about common sense gun reform and or gun safety. We all have talents to offer and our organization would absolutely love your help. Whether you love organizing events, entering data, presenting, connecting through social media, we have a place for you. You can come talk to us about what your interests are and we will help connect you to Monster Man in Action and get you started. Together we can end gun violence, and together we will end gun violence. It's been a pleasure speaking with you today, and thank you so much for inviting us, and we will be happy to answer any questions later.